Women's Revolution is alive at the Cannes Film Festival, with top actresses and directors protesting in front of the world's media against sexual harassment. And off the red carpet, these are the women of France 24, bringing you your daily Cannes coverage, marching in solidarity. One actress who's been very outspoken about women's rights is Amber Heard, the ex-wife of Johnny Depp. Let's go meet her. Amber Heard, hello. Hi. The Cannes Film Festival is staging a protest on the red carpet to mark this moment in time for women. How do you think things are changing in film after Time's Up and Me Too? The tone has really been what has changed, and that's important because the audience uh, is needed for a message to land or resonate. The range of, uh, of inequalities is uh, vast. Uh, it ranges from professional to domestic, from sexual to psychological. And we've all been aware of these frustrations, but the tone in which frustration can be uh, voiced and, and, and heard, that's what's really changed recently, and that's incredibly important. And uh, next step is enacting the change. You know, as somebody who has who's suffered from not being heard adequately, having the tone not be right to, to, uh, to be heard or understood, I'm incredibly humbled to see that the, 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 the cultural conversation is finally shifting in the way it has. I want to talk about some of the roles um, that you've been working on and the roles you're working on now, um, notably um, the indie drama Gully. Um, what can you tell us about that? It's been compared to Clockwork Orange. I am incredibly proud um, to have a moment in my career uh, after doing Aquaman and before it comes out where I can pop in and out of various independent films that are being made by auteur, you know, up and coming, uh, sometimes first time um, directors. So I'm really fortunate to be in a moment in my career where I have the luxury to pop in and out or to take certain risks like doing this movie or doing the movie I'm doing now in New York. Alex per uh, Ross Perry's Her Smell. It's entirely female-led cast, um, uh, helmed by uh, Elizabeth Moss. I have a small supporting role in it, uh, uh, and I can pop in and do an interesting character that's very different from the one I did in Gully, <laughs> for instance. Uh, and I can get my hands dirty and go back to work and do the little passion projects that I love. And you're also starring in the upcoming blockbuster um, Aquaman. You're playing the character you played in Justice League, Mira. Um, tell us about playing a superhero. What's that like? Uh, it's hard work being a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so fun. Um, it's it's just it's very interesting process and it, it takes a lot of time and um, and, and uh, a lot of effort and it's kind of a surreal experience you know because so much of it is special effects and done afterwards and you have to be really fit to be a superhero you have to work out a lot yeah <laughs> I mean the gym <laughs> no I wanted to feel good and feel strong I think it was probably the le like you know I have very little skin is exposed and especially in comparison to just in general. Um, how, you know, my other roles, but I wanted to be strong from within, and I liked having a tying a physicality to my character and having something to root it in. And you're involved in many charities. You've recently been in Jordan working with Syrian refugees. And tell us about that. I recently had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, an organization called SAMS, the Syrian American Medical Society, and they organize uh, missionary trips all around the world, but primarily in the Middle East, to alleviate the suffering of countless individuals affected by the conflict there, Syrian refugees in particular. And um, I recently went with them to Jordan and saw on firsthand what their work and many other are in incredibly inspiring um, nonprofits are, are building with both, both uh, huge organizations and geos like UNICEF and all the hard work that they're doing and the way they're changing lives, but also how much additional help is needed. I met so many strong women, um, actually women that had just a spare bedroom, so they you know, hosted a family or, uh, or hosted an orphan, and then, then they had to expand into the neighboring apartment, and then before long they had the whole building, and, and then it just grew naturally, these organic, um, grassroots organizations that were providing um, an incredibly important needed um, aid to so many innocent people. And you've also worked as a translator for Spanish-speaking women um, on the border uh, in the United States waiting for deportation. Why did that cause 
I was so fortunate to be involved with Amnesty International um, the way I was, and they asked me um, with this particular mission in mind, knowing that I come from the border, knowing that I speak Spanish, and I was already working with that organization, and they came to me with this particular um, mission. They were collecting data to present to the Supreme Court um, on the status of human rights in our migrant crisis, in our border c cities, and in our border towns, and in our border jails, and our deportation processes. So they were collecting a, a huge uh, um, amount of information, and I was lucky to be involved with them at a time. They asked me to come on a trip with them, and, and we spent a lot of time on the border, um, not just at, in the deportation camps, if you will, um, but in these like makeshift cities that have that are jails. Uh, I sat in many different hearings where I saw chain gangs of individuals just literally being one after the other sentenced. Um, some of them didn't even have shoes on. Uh, you know, I, I was, it was incredibly moving and to be able to, to talk to women um, who typically uh, have, I've seen the worst of the worst in these situations and these experiences matter to me, not just because I'm from that area, but because they're human. We're a world away from that here at the Cannes Film Festival. It's such a different world, yes. <laughs> it's a very glamorous affair. Um, <laughs> yes. But that's, that's a good part of my job, is I can use one uh, with the other. You know, being in one world has given me an incredible platform to be of service in the, in, in the world that I live in, which is, you know, the world I come from, the real world. <laughs> it's not this beautiful, almost, uh, you know, hard to believe. Uh, it's kind of magical, Cannes. And you have fun on the red carpet. Um, at the Met Gala recently, you were wearing a very funky headband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you decide your looks? I mix a lot of imagination and the, the time, expertise, blood, sweat, and tears of a few really, really dedicated uh, professionals <laughs> working around me. You were a role model to lots of um, young, wom young women and young people. And do you have a role model? I wouldn't say I, one role model, but I, I have women that in my real life, in my personal life, that have, uh, I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be speaking to me, if I didn't have the women around me that I do. Um, not just in terms of inspiration, but in terms of support. I've always been inspired by uh, women like Ayan Hirsi Ali, um, but I didn't know them personally. I, I have my own personal versions of that, of course, too. But uh, we need more. We need a lot more. Amber, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.